Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how to put together my uh, wallet, the double, the double wallet, not the trifold one, and it has two pockets inside. It can be done in one hooping, or there is an option to make flaps to go inside. So that would be a first hooping. So those would be inside like that instead. Gives you a nice little finished edge. So I'm going to show you that as well. And there are three different versions of the snap tab wallet that come in the file. So you've got this one where the snaps go here and then the other snap goes here. This one does need more of a rivet though because there's not that much space left for a snap tab, although some people can fit it. Then you've got this one with the snap here and then the snap tab part on top. And then you've got the one here, which is the same deal, although it has the eyelet part of it. And I also, I'm not sure if you can quite tell, but this one is not as flimsy as say this one. So you can see kind of the, the difference. So this, this one actually has paper inside of it. It's something I like to do for the wallets. Just, I like the rigid feeling of them. This one just has the one piece of vinyl. It does not have a lining. So you can see the stitches, the inside. And then it just has the flaps, which is the thinner vinyl as well. So if you like it not as structured, then that would be for you. And then there's this one, which is a slightly more structured, but it does not have the paper that I put inside the cardstock. It does have a lining in it, this one, and it has a slightly thicker vinyl on it. This is more of a marine vinyl. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to do this part first, just so I can show it to you. And these are the inside flaps. So first thing to do is put a placement stitch on the, this is actually Ollie Fun Fabric, but it's what I like to use for the wallets. Although you can use stabilizer if you prefer or tear away stabilizer, but I like this. So first thing is the placement stitch onto the stabilizer material. Okay the placement stitch has been done and it's opposite from what it looks like in the version that has the design on it because when you flip the to the back then it has to be the opposite so what i like to do is i have these little notches this one you can't see very well right now but and i always like to extend those out so that when I'm doing other things, I'm actually going to be able to see them. This pattern is designed for a five by seven hoop, so I wasn't able to go out further with these, otherwise it wouldn't fit in that hoop. So this part will be for, if you've got the snap tab version, or if you have the eyelet version, and then you need to put your piece of vinyl material that will be the inside flaps and you need to put it on top of the placement stitch covering everything as well. You want it to come above this one by a little bit so that when you're cutting out the actual snap tab you have enough material. So you put that on, I spray adhesive mine into place and I will run the next stitches. All right, I ran the next stitches on there, which are the actual finished stitches to, that are these, that will line the edge. Let's see, can we see that? 
Oh, that's blurry. So, they're just the finishing bead stitches. And you can actually be done at this point if you want. That's how easy the inside is. So you would, if you want to be done at this point, you would just cut a straight line down the center of that, and then you would cut out where you would want the little bit left over, this part here, where you would want this little bit left over, so you'd cut straight and then cut that out. I actually have another stitch in the pattern, which I like to use with no thread. It makes the holes, so it just gives me an accurate area where I can cut, so I'm going to go run that right now. Okay, so I went and I ran those last stitches I was telling you about without the thread in it, unless you want to cut around the thread. <laughs> so I'm not sure how well it can be seen on here, but there is the dots down the center, and then there's the dots that you can kind of see going around the rest of the design. So I'm going to use that as the area to cut out. So to cut this out, you would just use an X-Acto knife and line it up down the center. with the dots. Let me just get to the other side. Let's see here. So then I would just line up with that dots and you would cut here. And then you would cut on the other side. So that is what you would do for both sides of this and then you would just cut out the pieces and have the two. So next we're going to start on the other part of the design, the cardstock style of paper and I ran my design onto some cardstock to make myself a template and just cut it out. And that way I know where the finished design is going to be. And then I cut out a piece that would be this center piece here because I don't like the paper in the tab parts. It's not necessary. I like the paper in there because it just helps give the wall a little bit more structure. So then I would just put this here and make sure that my center lines up with the center there. And then I would put that over top of it and spray adhesive it or tape it or do both in place. So you can embroider through the cardstock, it's not a problem. You can make cards on your embroidery machine as well. So something else I will also do at this stage before putting it back on the machine to run the design is flip it over to the back and this little notch is where the flaps are going to be lining up to. See, like that and like that when we get to the other part of the end part. But when you're putting a lining piece on the back, you will not be able to see those notches. So something I like to do right now is I like to take a ruler and line it up to where those would be. And I, would, I like to extend it outside so that I don't have to do it later and I won't forget 
it just makes it a lot easier because you do not want anything in the center part here when you're putting your flaps on otherwise your wallet isn't going to close nice so just help yourself out and extend those out so you don't have to do it later all right so the next thing that I'm going to do is put my pieces back on and then I'm going to take it to my machine and run the design and I will be back after that. Okay, so I have, wrong side up, I have run the design. So the placement stitch is done, the fabric was put on, you can't really see it under there but I have the paper under there. And then the design is run and the next step after the design is run is actually really the last step to making the wallet so you turn it over to the back now if you want to put a piece of material here as a lining piece to cover this up uh, you can you can use vinyl if your machine is okay with the three layers of vinyl you can put felt or I like to use another piece of the Ollie fun fabric on here and I don't actually like it to go above here I don't like it in the snap top parts all that much so I'm actually going to put it about there but since I can't see all that much down there and I do want to see those lines I'm just cutting out a piece so that I can see the flap placement lines. All right, so this will cover up all of that. And the next thing to do, so I'll tape that in place just a little bit. Oh, I can, hope you guys are seeing this properly. All right, so tape on the outside because you don't want tape in your wallet and then you want to make sure you get the, if you're going to use this, so then you want to make sure you get the right pieces on the right side. So this has to go up here so it covers the snap tab area. And then this one will go on this side. So what you would do is you would line it up. Let's see. So you're going to want to see a little bit of that. So I would look like that. Here, make it easy to show you where you want to line it up to. You want to line up where the edge of these stitches would be with the edge of this. So this just goes out, but you're trying to get the center in the center of that. And something else you could also do is you could also find the centers and draw yourself a line and run it out. But I can see that I've got that there. So I'm just going to do this. And then with this side, same kind of deal. I can see that it's going there. It's covering it all up. So this is the line that you're going to line up on this side. So I'm just going to do that. Then put back on my material. Get the tape. And I can see it right there. So with that, you're going to want to tape that down and you're going to want it out of the way of the stitches. So just kind of watch where you're taping because it is no fun to try and take out from the stitches. So you can tape the middle, no stitches are happening there. All your stitches are going to be on the outside parts. So like that. And then for the other one, same idea. There's my little right there. Mm 
tape it a little bit here so nothing moves and a little bit here all right so the next thing I have to do for my machine is I actually have to put a piece of tracing paper on it otherwise my machine gets all loopy on the bottom and not real happy with me doesn't like the vinyl so I'm just gonna do that on in. And the next thing to be done is just doing the other stitches and that will hold the front and the back flaps all together. Now if you do not want to use the inside flaps as the first hooping, that's fine. You can do it all in one hooping by just taking rectangle pieces and lining them up to the same spots that you would line up the lines to and then you would just tape them into place and that will give you just regular flaps. But you do need to make sure you leave that space in the middle so that when you close it that it's going to give you a nice fold in the close there. So it's better to leave a little bit more space than not enough space. Okay, so if you want to do it in one hooping, that's all you need to do. All right, I'm going to run the next stitches and I will be right back. Extra. So then, this one's fine. So, over here, I like to do the straight cutting with my guys. And I like to cut off the excess as I'm going just because I can get a better grip on it. So there we go. See how well? And this, this fabric really sticks really well because it's got that fuzzy back on it. So, to the spray adhesive that is. And then I'm going to cut this one. I always like cutting out the snap tab parts and anything that's more of a flappy bit first. Okay. So then I cut with the kais just a straight line. And I try not to go with too many snips. Long straight snips are a lot better for cutting out snap tabs and things. So to do the other one, I flip it over because it's way easier from the back to try and get the that side to snip well. There we go. Again, same with this one. The shorter side is easier on the back. Okay. And then for the longer side, I start it with the exacto and not the exacto, the rotary, and then I finish it off with this, the Kai scissors. So there we go. And then I just take my last snip with the Kai's. I can see a little bit of the backing piece there. There we go. And this one, I don't quite like the way it came out, so I'm just going to make a little adjustment there. There we go. And you can flip it over and move it around. There we go. And then I like for the round parts. I actually like using these scissors more. 
and you kind of have to turn the item and not really turn the scissors when you're cutting snap tabs and vinyls and stuff. So, although uh, you can see how rigid this is because I put the paper inside of it. And you just kind of have to make sure you don't bend it in the wrong spot so that you don't crease the paper inside in the wrong spot before you bend it. All right. So then, make sure you're bending it in half, <laughs> especially if you got the paper in there, which is another reason I like it, because then I get a nice press along the fold. And I'll use my scissors or anything else, if you have a brayer or something just to get that nice crease in there. So, and you can see, I don't know if you can see if I'm getting in the right spot here, but, oh, come on, focus. Ah, I want to focus properly. There we go. So you can see that if you had too much vinyl there, it would kind of puff out more. So if you're okay with that, then, but I prefer a slim lined kind of look. So there we go. And you can see where the paper folds inside. It's nice. I like the finished look on the insides. All right. So then this, bad mistake, but you're not gonna see it because I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and so that one you won't see. So, next thing to do is to put on the snap tabs and the rivet. So, to make the holes for the rivet, I like to use something called a Japanese, Japanese screw punch. And the last step on my file was to run placement stitches for holes, but I run that without any thread in the machine so that I can just get holes. Then I use those holes, and then you don't get the knotted threads. So that's how the Japanese screw punch works. <laughs> now, you can get use this for cam snaps, Although it is fairly tight, so here, I can just show you. I like to use rivets, but you kind of have to really squish it in if you're gonna use a, if you're gonna use a cam snap. See, it's very close to this, and it's because it's a five by seven pattern design, so. But if you like the cam snaps, then that's what you're going to do. But you definitely need a longer one. Because you see that's not even coming through the back there. So, what I prefer are my rivets. And my rivets are a 9mm round double cap rivet. So, I just put it through the hole. Click it in the back. Now, you don't need a rivet press to put in rivets. You can use a hammer and a punch. Uh, that's fine. I just happen to have a rivet setter press. So and that's what I'm going to use here. So put that in, push down, and done. And it takes up less space. So I like that. And it doesn't come apart easy. So then the next thing is to put in the snaps and again I have the hole that you can see no thread but it does give me the placement stitch where it would be and so line that up and then the bitty punch and there is also one on the other side in this particular design and I will give that a punch as well and then the cam snap so for this one you're going to want the snap on the outside and 
the female side of it there. And I use the table to give it a good press. There we go. And then for the other side, you're going to want this piece on the back, the inside. Make sure you got enough coming through. And then you want the male portion up top there. Same deal. Here's the table. And there we go. And voila! It is done. So, like I said, there is actually three different file versions that come with the designs when I do them, because I know everybody has different tastes. So you've got the one with snap tab, you've got the one with the eyelet, and let me see here, you've also got the one with the two snaps and the tab coming out on the side. Alright guys, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.